Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you're new here, my name is Ben Schubert. I'm a filmmaker and I talk about filmmaking stuff. Today, I wanna to talk about my editing suite. So I've done a few videos on this in the past, so you can check those out if you're interested to see what I've done so far. But just a quick recap, I am operating on a 2009 Mac Pro. Now this computer has been amazing. It is a beast, but I'm kind of at the top end of what I can do with it in terms of, you know, stock upgrades. Just a quick update of what I've done to it. Here's where we're at. So Mojave was the highest that you could upgrade your Mac Pro. After that, Apple has stopped doing kind of any service upgrades for it. This computer has two six core processors, so it's a 12 core beast. It has 128 gigs of RAM. I'm still running an RX 580 GPU. Now for hard drives, I currently have about 25 terabytes of hard drive space, which is actually one of the big sellers for me to like keep holding onto this machine is just the storage capacity. And then one other thing that I have is I have a PCI card with eight terabytes of high speed storage, which I can use for editing, which has been amazing, but that I wanna to update too. And then I've made a video about the card I use to run my Apple Thunderbolt display. I don't use that card anymore because it doesn't fit with my NVMe drives. So I've taken it out. I am planning on replacing it with something else, which I'll talk about soon. This computer has been really great. It has been serving me really well until I made one upgrade. And that upgrade was the Canon EOS R5. So the C200 footage, the raw footage plays really smoothly in this. Any other MP4 footage is fine. ProRes is fine. But anytime I get into H.265 footage, it's impossible. So my questions are, can I take this computer further than where it is now. Can I get it to a point where I can smoothly edit 8K footage, where I can smoothly deal with H.265 footage? Can I get actual Thunderbolt to work on this, as opposed to like this weird workaround that I've been doing? So that's where I'm at right now. That big question, can this computer be better? And I think it can, and I have a plan for it. So one of the big hurdles is I'm stuck at Mojave. I would like this to be at, at least Catalina, if not whatever the newer one is at this moment or coming up into the future, I would like to be able to upgrade. And the other thing is H.265. And so the first thing that I really need to be doing with this is updating this with a program called OpenCore. And there's a community on Facebook and the internet and where have you that have actually been working on solving these issues. So using this patch, you actually get hardware acceleration, which allows you to use your GPU to decode H.265, and it allows you to update to newer operating systems. I'm gonna be installing that. I think that's gonna be a huge game changer that is really just some simple software. Next, I need to add Thunderbolt, like actual, or at least somewhat actual Thunderbolt. And the last biggest project that I'm hoping to do is I'm gonna take that NVMe drive card and actually do what it's supposed to do. I'm gonna set it up as a RAID card and have it as RAID zero. So by using this card as a RAID zero drive, I'll be able to get really fast speeds for video editing. Obviously I need to keep backups in other places because RAID zero, it's not always that, you know, secure. Sometimes drives fail and you need to be ready for that. Now in terms of speed for context, your average SSD, like the ones I use for my Ninja 5, those run about 500 megabytes per second. The drives I have in this RAID drive on their own will go about 2000 megabytes per second, but combined into RAID 0, they should run about six to 7,000 megabytes per second. So it's super fast and just the ability to like access read and write super fast means smooth buttery playback so these are the upgrades that i'm hoping to do i'm hoping that it works out and we're just going to test it out and see how it goes so so far i have installed open core i've followed the instructions 
from the Facebook group. I'll have those linked down below. And so far, so good. It runs really smooth. I don't have any issues. And now I'm about to install Mac OS 11.2.3. Don't think it's updated for 11.3 yet. Uh, there still seems to be some problems that are being worked out. So I'm just gonna go that way. And hopefully this all goes smoothly. Okay, so I finally got OpenCore installed and up and running. Then I finally got my computer updated to Big Sur. I am super happy about that update. It actually makes my computer way better than I thought it would. I thought it would be like, you know, minor update, but I feel like there's a lot of things that have happened and it really makes better use of your GPU. And so between the hardware acceleration from the open core and, you know, Big Sur's use of GPU and DaVinci Resolve 17, I can easily play back the H.265 footage as well as my Canon, you know, 4K raw footage and everything uses about half the GPU power as the way it did before. So I'm very happy. I want you to check this out. So this is the 120 uh, 4K H.265 footage that comes out of the R5. Premiere does not work as well, but it's still, you know, pretty fine. And this is the same footage in DaVinci Resolve and it plays back perfectly smooth, no issues. And this is the H.265, this is 4K, 120 frames per second. It's great. And this is the 4K fine, no issues, no drop frames. So I finally finished setting up my Mac Pro with OpenCore and the Titan Ridge Thunderbolt card. And here's how it went. So I finally got OpenCore set up. I installed Big Sur. You can see it's running behind me. Now the place where I did come up against a number of hiccups was installing the Thunderbolt card. So for the Titan Ridge card, if you're gonna get one, I kind of highly recommend getting one that's been flashed already. On one hand, the hardest part has already been done. And if you have open core, you're pretty much set up to just have it work. There's just a couple things you need to do and there's instructions in open core to do that. But if you are gonna get a card and flash it yourself, I will leave you instructions. When I bought my card, it wasn't easy to get a flash card. There was few and far between. Now there's a bunch of people doing it. So it's pretty easy to get one. So you might as well just go that route, honestly. It also saves you from having to get the extra kit to do the flashing yourself. So that's a plus. Now the Titan Ridge card does not work as smoothly as, you know, I would like it to. My card readers don't always work. Um, I don't seem to be able to get data passed through through either of my screens. Not every device works, but maybe if I get that power cable installed, then maybe it'll work. Who knows? I gotta try that. So, that's where I'm at now. I was thinking about making a video about how to install the Titan Ridge Thunderbolt, and maybe I will, but honestly, it was kind of annoying. And I just recommend buying a pre-flash card because that is way easier. Let someone else do the work. So I think the big question is, in 2021, does it still make sense to upgrade a 2009 to 2012 Mac Pro for, you know, video production? Yes and no. They're still pretty powerful. There's still a ton you can do with them. I mean, storage alone is pretty amazing. I've got 25 terabytes of storage in here to work with, plus my eight terabyte RAID card, you know, which can be set to RAID zero. You have incredibly fast speeds to work with. That's pretty great. You can put in really powerful GPUs, and get a lot of power. Personally, I think this computer is really great, especially for the price. These things are incredibly cheap to buy used and then, you know, build out. So these computers are still really good. I think they compete with the M1 chip and they have a ton of storage. And as much as I want this machine to go on forever, I am starting to see a bit of an end date for it, but we'll see how it goes with my workflow and we'll see how these new updates carry me through. So if this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you wanna see more videos about filmmaking, gear, skills, story, that sort of thing. And otherwise, I'll see you later.